Right then, let's do the old uh, commute to work. So yeah, uh, time to start a new video. Uh, still got some help from uh, Sam. And in this video, we're going to glaze the ends of the greenhouse. Not the gable lens, they're going to be vented windows, but just the uh, glazed part of the ends. Uh, we're going to make some wooden guttering to one, cover up my mistake a little bit, um, and two, to catch the water off the roof, and just generally get the thing finished and ready for uh, ready for planting some plants in. I'm not going to make the door or the opening windows yet, because I've run out of time this year really with it. I need to start the uh, top workshop, uh, but we're going to get it ready for planting anyway. Okay, let's get to work. Uh, guttering is pretty simple, it's just off cuts from the uh, glazing and uh, I cut them down the middle to make them a bit smaller and uh, two of those pieces are glued on edge, glued and screwed uh, just to butt joint together and then there's the thinner strip there to the left that you can see that's got a 45 degree angle on it and that screws to the other edge I used a polyurethane glue and uh, made sure everything was really nice and tight um, straight cuts and it all uh, glued together and it actually ended up being well completely watertight, surprisingly watertight um, it is wood but it's larch, larch is a durable wood and it should give at least 15 years of service um, as a guttering and it's like just a few hours to uh, make new ones and put them back up I think it will probably last longer than um, uh, plastic out in the sun so I think it's, um, I think it's a good option and uh, cost nothing. Yeah, it's running good. Yeah. It's hardly leaking, even though they're only just butted up. That's good, isn't it? It's not even joined together yet, and there's actually like two inches of water in there. Well, we're just about to glaze this back wall. We have a bit of an issue because one of the uh, bits of glass is the wrong size. It is ordered as a roof one, 1450 instead of 1500. So on the back wall, one of them is going to sit, the overlap is going to sit 50 mil lower, unfortunately. But it uh, doesn't matter, we'll uh, use it. It's not a big deal. Uh, this time it wasn't actually me that ordered it wrong. I ordered this right, but it's come wrong. But that doesn't matter. We'll carry on and uh, we'll get this one, this back wall blaze now. Right, um, yeah, so just slot it over the top of the edge. Oh. 
Hey. How's that looking? A little bit fun to you. To you? To you. To, to, to you. Oh, to me. We've got 13 mil either side, should we? Happy? Yep. I've got to slide it down onto the notch. Right, right there. Yeah. That wants to be there. Oh. <laughs> Not a nice sound, do yeah. it? Everyone. So we uh, managed to get the ends glazed yesterday. Uh, it's quite a difficult job actually. There's a lot of angles and, and they all had to be cut lips into them to account for the glass. It was a uh, quite a fiddly job to cages. Looks a bit leery at the moment, you know, uh, but it's all going to settle down. The wood's going to go grey and it's going to um, look a lot more sort of blended in. Um, I actually want that to happen. I don't want to put anything over them to stop that. I want it to go grey because it will look a lot less intrusive. Uh, the job today is just 
finishing off jobs really. I'm not going to be doing the door or the uh, back window or the opening vent windows in the gables uh, this summer. Probably do that. I might do it in the evenings but possibly uh, uh, do that over the winter and get that ready for next year because I'm really late to start the top workshop um, so I need to start that. So it's just getting this to a point where I can uh, put plants in it or Doc can put plants in it. Um, and we can use it this year because I'm just running out of time. But I'm really, really pleased with how it's turned out overall. Like it's, it's, I think it's better than I imagined it. So that's really good. The designs worked well. And um, so yeah, odd little jobs today. I've got a little bit of filling in along the foundation where I had to change it a little bit and, and lift it up because it wasn't quite right. Um, so I've got to put, do some stonework and some pointing under there. We need to put the gutter on the other side and attach some kind of pipe to it. And uh, then we're going to leave this for um, basically details like the door and windows and stuff. Okay, let's uh, see if we can get this done uh, today. Whenever I make these videos, I can never tell what the overall uh, comments... I mean, most of the comments I get are, are positive. But I always get a lot of comments that are basically the same thing. And the theme of last video was handling the glass without gloves. Uh, Here's an edge of the glass. I'll show you. This is an edge of the glass. Okay. The uh, other thing that came up a lot um, was, uh, apart from our lack of gloves and how dangerous it was, was uh, ventilation. Um, I don't know, this is not a particularly big greenhouse and I did a lot of calculations for, for, for area and how much ventilation was needed and I worked out that with the, on a really hot day, which we don't actually get that many of, uh, with the door open, two ends, gables, fully opening, so not just like little flaps, but they fully open completely, both ends and the back wall, opening windows, it'll be enough ventilation. Um, so I'm pretty sure it will be. Also, the uh, can you see this gap behind here is being left as well. Um, this guttering fills this gap. And there's a ventilation gap all the way along there as well. So yeah, I think that's going to be enough. If it's not, I'll have to change something. But I am pretty certain it will be because we get we're in a fairly breezy location, and the gable end is basically going to be completely openable. So wind can go all the way through the roof and out the other side and to me that is a lot more effective than just having some little opening flaps in the roof that rely on the rising of the air we're actually going to have a, a, a through draft it also means I'll have more control over it if needed because I could put a fan in one of those things solar powered off of the greenhouse and then um, I actually control the temperature via that whereas opposed to the roof windows you need special opening flaps and everything and it's a bit more complicated. I can just put a fan in one of those openings and control it like that because if uh, air goes out, negative pressure, cold air comes in. So that's the plan. I think it will work fine. I don't just um, uh, just guess these things. I do do quite a lot of calculations and research before and uh, I'm pretty sure that the ventilation is adequate. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm see if get the mark.
Right, so there we go. That is going to end this uh, phase or chapter of the greenhouse build. The building ended up costing somewhere around £2,000. Uh, 900 of that was for the glass, which is uh, tough and formal glass, so very strong and should last a long time, but also quite expensive. But I got it very cheap because a kind subscriber, fairly local, that owns a uh, window maintenance business got it for me at trade price. So uh, it ended up costing a lot, well the whole building ended up costing uh, less than I thought the glass would cost originally. So it was a very good deal, a building like this, a timber framed uh, greenhouse or even a cedar greenhouse, timber greenhouse of this size is in the order of £15,000 and I managed to do it for £2,000 and uh, a lot of time, probably in the order of 400 hours of work at least, um, but yeah not very much money and in fact the uh, video series being as popular as it's been uh, has ended up paying for those materials so it cost me my time uh, but not really any money at all. This is a much more uniform building style than I've really done before and in some ways that's actually quite a bit easier to do. Um, the joinery aspect of this greenhouse, the woodwork aspect of it is actually uh, fairly simple and I think probably most people could do it if they had a go. Um, the comparative to round wood circular buildings, this is actually really quite easy. Um, the complexity and the difficulty came with it in trying to keep everything perfectly square for pieces of square glass and that's where it tested me in design and uh, measuring everything, getting everything accurately and square and level. Um, the other buildings I do, that stuff doesn't really matter as much. And obviously with glass, you're unable to just plane a little bit off the edge if something doesn't quite fit right. So that aspect of it was much more challenging than other buildings I've done. I'm definitely going to do uh, more building styles like this in the future. I'm actually planning on potentially building a house like it. Um, but it will be a combination of square and roundwood timbers, curved braces, with a circular building on the end of it. Um, often people wonder why I build such elaborate buildings when you know it could be deemed a bit over the top to build something like that as a greenhouse or build a timber framed power shed for my uh, tur uh, turgo turbine um, but the reason I do it is for practice for future buildings so I'm developing my skills and skills I learnt building this I'm going to transfer over to our future house build. Anyway that's enough uh, waffling on um, that's going to conclude this part of the uh, greenhouse build we're going to get planted plants in it and um, I shall carry on with it evenings or weekends or possibly not for a few months and we'll do the doors and opening windows and everything okay hope you enjoyed the series and thanks for watching